perfect. It's okay. I'm Jackson Croy. This is episode one of Artists on Artists from the Ballard Talisman. I'm here with Brendan Hickey. Hello. Uh, Brendan, you are a filmmaker. Yes. Okay. Um, you are a sophomore? have been making films for a lot longer than that, though. Okay, how long have you been making films? Uh, I think that the first real film that I made was sixth grade, and I made it as part of a Northwest Film Forum camp, and I uh, kind of beca became hooked, and um, I don't know, it's always been something that, well, I've tried a whole bunch of things in my life, it's always been something that's been pretty consistent since then. Cool, cool. Um, what would you say is your favorite thing you've done? Oh, my favorite? I think, uh, in terms of my short films, I think... My best film is, is my film Jimmy the Limo Driver, uh, in, in terms of just all around. But I'd say my most recent film, uh, Mumbly Peg, in terms of story structure, I'd say a, a problem I ran into a lot early on in my work is that a lot of my films would just be more tests to see if I could do something, and they wouldn't necessarily have an arc of, a, of any sorts. Um, and I feel like Mumbly Peg definitely, uh, more than any of my other films, has a beginning, middle, and end and isn't just the start of a film. So I think, in terms of story structure, that's my favorite. Um, do you think it's your best? I think overall, no. I, I feel like Jimmy the Lemon Driver, uh, in terms of technical achievement, is much stronger. And I think the reason that it is, um, is that Mumbly Peg, I feel like, is, is a little, it's a little long, and because of that, trying, trying to shoot the same amount of material that I would shoot with some of my other films in the same amount of time, I feel like I didn't give myself enough time to, um, I guess, work with each scene as much as I would have liked to. And because of that, I feel like the technical achievement itself, the actual visuals, um, and the execution isn't as strong as Jimmy the Do you th Do you have a worst work? Do you have like something that you just really uh, don't like? Or? Um, well, see, it's, it's a little unfair to say these are my worst works, but um, I do this thing called Sif Crash Student, which is amazing and I would totally recommend it to anyone. It's basically like Sif runs these bi-monthly challenges where young filmmakers get together and try and make a film in eight hours. And I've, I've met a lot of people through it, like my constant collaborator, Sam Cleary, who's been a DP on a lot of my projects. And a lot of those have been extremely hit and miss. And uh, specifically, this film I made called Reverse is very difficult to watch. Um, but I think all of my films, and it goes without saying, being a filmmaker, none are without flaws. So you can find faults in any of them. What's your next step, sort of, um, as an artist in in the like a really broad sense? Like maybe I don't know. It's a new year. Like I know that I was writing a lot of resolutions or like kind of goals based around yeah. art. Uh, do you do you have any? Uh, well, not in terms of filmmaking, but I'm I'm, uh, I'm definitely I, I want I've. I have the creative suite for Adobe, and I really only use Premiere and Audition. So I'd really like to this year learn how to maybe get better at Photoshop and, and maybe After Effects and, and really just try and, you know, broaden my skills. Because if you want to make it in any industry, you have to know a lot about a whole bunch of different things. And I feel like, you know, just limiting myself to filmmaking isn't going to be, you know, uh, it's not going to help me going forward. So, and then also this year, I'm, I'm trying to, I don't know, maybe move up in scale to some more ambitious projects, um, but I haven't entirely decided what my next project's gonna be yet. Um, okay, uh, so you're in the film program. Yes, yeah. How do you like it? Uh, I, I think it's very, very, it helps a lot as a young filmmaker, and I think it's a very, um, you know, beneficial uh, program, but, uh, my biggest, my biggest thing that I like to do is I, like, I think there's, there's a good balance. Like I feel like as a filmmaker, as an artist, it's really great to be in a program, but I also really like to make films independently. And, and you know, what's interesting is that that happens a lot. I feel like it's, it's akin to almost the, uh, the landscape of actual filmmakers. You know, filmmakers often do stuff you know, on their own, and then also the film program is really great because you get to learn how to, how to work with clients and stuff. And I feel like... It's, it's very crucial to have a balance of both. That's why I like to work on films independently, but I also think the film program is great and you learn a lot from it. So, yeah. Awesome. Um, so, uh, maybe within your discipline and outside of it, uh, who do you think are maybe three or four of your like biggest influences? Wow, that's a, that's a great question. I, I'd say 
in terms of actual filmmaking, I'm in awe of Edgar Wright, and you can see that influence. Who, if you're not familiar, he's done films like Scott Pilgrim, um, Sha Shaun of the Dead, the list goes on. He's done a whole bunch, and um, I think you can definitely see in in visual influence that he's really influenced the content of my work. But then, in terms of actual inspirations, I think Donald Glover's a big one because he doesn't necessarily limit himself to just filmmaking. He's a TV writer, he's an actor, he's a stand-up comedian, he, he raps, he does, um, he, he directly he created the TV show Atlanta, which is very Let's doing, talk about Atlanta. It's, it's, it's doing pretty well. I've only seen the first two episodes, so I can't talk in detail with you, but uh, I, no, because we don't have FX, but I, I'm really excited to check that out, and I'm really excited he's going to be Lando. So I think in terms of um, actual influence on me, not necessarily in style, but the fact that he does all those different things, I think is a huge influence on me. Because I feel like in order to find out what you're really good at, you have to do, you have to almost in a way try everything. And I, I feel like you're o the only way to get better is by being bad at something and then saying, okay, well, this isn't working, let me try something else. And I think, not to say that Donald Glover is bad at anything, but that mentality of trying a whole bunch of different things is really in, uh, inspirational to me. And I, I try and, you know, do that. Yeah, I mean, I, 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 like, I honestly think that, um, among, like, a couple other things, Atlanta was one of the best shows this year. Yeah. And I think, I don't know, something about, he just has, like, such an interesting grasp of art. Like, Awaken My Love kind of yeah. shows, it shows almost the same thing to mm -hmm. me. Like, Atlanta's very, um, the art of it is very based in, like, the subtle moments, you know, like, I'm just thinking of, like, in the very first episode, like, he, like, brushes his daughter's teeth. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, I mean, like, he, it's just totally totally about that, like, narrowing in on something so much and then just kind of filling in the well, gaps. Well, even in his music, you know, you look Especially, at be because yeah. the internet is, is such a... It's not necessarily a traditional rap album, but it's rap, and then you look at something like Awaken My Love, and it, it's reminiscent of things like Funkadelic, and it's reminiscent... He, he, it's obvious that he himself takes in a lot of media and he, 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 he's well versed in all sorts of you know culture and stuff and you can see that in his work you know you can't really limit yourself to one specific thing and you see that even in his music that he is influenced by a whole bunch of different things and he can kind of channel that and, and do a whole bunch of different things which is it's just very very incredible what are the three best movies you saw this year the three best movies I saw this year well, I, I would say some obvious ones that you should go see. I, I, would, I would say that. They're probably my favorite uh, films of the year, like La La Land and Moonlight. Um, but I, I might want to focus on three films that I think not a, as many people may have seen, and that's The Witch, which is really incredible. It's, it's the first thing I've seen since Kubrick that's very reminiscent of Kubrick, especially like The Shining, and it's a very traditional... Um, like horror, but like psychological horror film. So I'd highly recommend that. And then, unfortunately, not a lot of people saw Richard Linklater's newest film, Everybody Wants Some, um, which is very high energy and, and is great because it's just a slice of life, which is really interesting. Like, it's not this big film with all these, you know, moving parts. It's just a film about people going about their lives and, and their, their daily going abouts. And I think that's, that's really important and it's... It, and it's something you don't really see in modern cinema very often. So I'd recommend that. And then um, I also really liked, I know a lot of people are mixed on it, but I really liked Hail Caesar, which is the Coen Brothers' newest film. I thought it was absolutely hilarious, and um, I think that, uh, what's his name? The guy who's playing young Han Solo, uh, Alden Ehrenreich. He, oh, yeah. Yeah, I think he's definitely a breakout star of 2016, and I think he's extremely talented. I think we're going to be seeing a lot more from him going forward. So those three th films, highly recommended. Um, do you have a worst, do you have a least favorite film you saw this year? Uh, I, I would definitely, I would say Suicide Squad, but everybody's said Suicide Squad. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I don't know. I really didn't like, I, I'm, I'm hesitant to even say this because then I might get a lot of backlash, but I really didn't like Jean Favreau's The Jungle Book, which is interesting because that's, Jon Favreau is another person that I highly admire. Um, Multidisciplinary artist. Yeah, yeah and <laughs> yeah, and and uh, like the other day, like I saw this this um, Hollywood Reporter roundtable that he did with Donald Glover and like Lin Manuel Miranda and Damien Chazelle, who's the director of Whiplash, and that's like so cool that he's just like I, he's the type of person who also wants to know a lot about everything and wants to understand stuff. 
So I definitely admire Jean Favreau. I just think the Jungle Book, the, the remake, it's just kind of loses the, the, the entire spirit of the original film, and they take away the ending, which is the most important thing. And, and I, I don't know, I'm also, I'm also definitely against the idea of creating entire films you know, on a green screen. Like I feel like there's part of the, the magic of filmmaking is taking something that already exists in a world in the world and using a camera to make it your own and tend to capture it. And if if you're like just creating everything and nothing's real, that I, I feel like that kind of takes away from some of the magic. And I felt kind of the same way. Um, I, I enjoyed Rogue One, but I felt kind of the same way about, you know, the resurrection of dead actors in Rogue One. I feel like it's 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 just not cool. Like it, yeah, that yeah. was weird. I mean, I, weird. there's like things like um, seeing the the dead guy, yeah, well, I, the super old one, mm -hmm. uh, seeing a like clearly digitally animated person yeah. standing next to a clearly not person was like a real person was was so weird for me. Yeah. Like it just it it kept that was like what was on my mind the whole film. And it's also like kind of the uncanny valley. Like even if they it got totally, it perfect, it totally right? Is, like yeah. I'd be like. Well, he's not alive, so it's it's weird. It's just in and of itself, it's kind of, it's hard to look at. And mm -hmm. I just feel like, you know, as more and more things become automated and more and more, like, things are done by machines, I think art's definitely something that has to be a very human, you know, creation. And I feel like when you just create everything on a machine and it's not, even if people are making things on a machine, I feel like that just kind of takes away from some of the magic of cinema. Yeah, for sure. I actually saw Rogue One on the night that, Carrie Fisher died, which was super That's weird. That's weird. Me. It was yeah, it was really yeah. It was awkward because I like heard about it like in the car on the way to see it. Well, I remember when she when she first got the heart attack, I'd be like, oh no, what if she died and then this movie was <laughs> yeah. playing? Wouldn't that be weird? And then she did, and I'm like, ah, oh. mm -hmm. I can't imagine seeing that afterwards and, and just knowing that it's it's not her. It just feels a little disrespectful. Um. So. Uh, Let's talk about the copier because that's actually, I think, my favorite of your. Oh, pieces. the copy room. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. the copy room. Uh, <laughs> a lot of people put some inflicted. Uh, they were like, "Oh, it's really cool how you called it a thriller," and it's it's like the Hitchcock thing of mm -hmm. like if you call something a thriller, then um, people will be on edge. That wasn't even really my intent. My intent was to just uh, <laughs> make these two people standing in a copy room and have that be the entire film. Yeah, no, I mean, I thought it was hilarious. <laughs> I was like, I, I totally like didn't get it at first and I was like watching I was like oh that's weird this is like a really long shot it just feels kind of awkward and then I was like oh, oh it is two more yeah. minutes of this yeah. it's uh based yeah, on so true that's, events that's really interesting that's um I thought uh I don't know I mean I thought yeah I thought that was great um real quick uh before we wrap this up uh I want to do a quick round of over under do you know what that is oh yeah yeah okay so it's like overrated underrated yeah right? okay mm -hmm. yep uh, so we'll just go real quick. Just say the first thing that pops in your mind. Yeah. Uh, superhero movies. Oh, totally overrated. Okay. Jim Carrey. Underrated. Great, great comic actor. The Office. Uh, j rated just fine, but I'd say maybe a little underrated because everyone should see it. Uh, saxophones. Definitely underrated. Twitter. Uh, overrated. Not a fan. Cashmere. Underrated. <laughs> Being tall. Uh, I'm mixed, but I'm going to say, on the whole, underrated, because it's pretty nice sometimes. <laughs> Great. Uh, well, I think that's it. Thanks that's a lot. It. This has yeah. been Brendan Hickey, uh, director, producer, screenwriter, actor, sophomore. Yep. Check, and... out, check out my YouTube channel, and also, I, I'm doing a podcast with Peter Bauer that comes out every Friday, so check that out on SoundCloud. Yeah, his YouTube channel is Studio Subtext. Yep. Um, there will be a link in the description, and uh, thanks for listening. Thanks so much for having me.